Hello, Dr. Amaruz here again, and in this video lesson, we will have an introduction of anatomy. If you have any question, you can email me here at amar at goodrational.com or comment your question down below. Here are the objectives or what we want to get out from this video lesson. First, we have some definitions. What is anatomy? What is cross anatomy? Microscopic anatomy? Then how you should study anatomy? then benefits and advantages of studying by region or by system then we'll talk about the anatomical position the anatomical planes and terms we use to describe the location let's talk about some definitions if we say anatomy by itself or gross anatomy both of them refer to the same thing which is the study of structures that can be seen grossly we are describing structures by the aid of eye then we have microscopic anatomy which is histology the study of cells and tissues using a microscope now anatomy is the base of practicing medicine why so because once you meet your patient you start with analyzing the chief complaint and the chief complaint the first thing we ask for is the site of the symptom. For example, the patient has pain. Diagnosis differs depending on the site and the location of the pain. For example, epigastric pain, it, it can be stomach problem, it can be esophagus problem, chest pain, it can be acute coronary syndrome, pericarditis, it can be aortic dissection, left hypochondriac pain, it can be spleen, it can be ribs, right inguinal, it can be herniation, it, it can be appendicitis. So knowing the structures in each region will give you a hint. But what gives you more accurate diagnosis, not just knowing the structures in each region, but knowing the context in which the structure is located. By understanding anatomy well, you will be able to interpret clinical observation correctly. When you know the blood supply, nerve supply, what is on the right side, what is on the left side, how these uh, structures are innervated, you can know exactly where is the lesion. So, knowing the anatomy of each region, what is the structures in that region, how does pain is transmitted, how is innervation is transmitted, what is the blood supply, will give you the ability to interpret symptoms correctly. Because you will see later the for example the nature of pain is different depending on the anatomy now a cardiac pain is somewhat heavy in nature tubal pain will be colicky in nature stomach problems might have metallic taste so knowing the structures and how and how each structure relate to each other will give you the base solid foundation to interpret clinical observation correctly then now how you should study anatomy it's not about memorizing names now don't get me wrong memorizing name is an essential thing but you should be able to describe the structures their blood supply their innervation their site size shape and relationship with adjacent structure so you need a network of information in order to visualize a physical structures in a patient you should be able to close your eyes and describe how structures relate to each other and describe accurately where is the structure is located so it's about understanding the context in which the terminology can be remembered not about memorizing the terminology now how you should study anatomy first watch the videos then buy Nita's atlas anatomy and the baby snail you will find their links in the description box below study the syllabus slide you have from your doctor get regular visits to an the anatomy lab after each lecture you should visualize the plastic models and relate to what you have studied you can also use a computer teaching modules and learning aids you will find them also in the description box down below now what are the benefits of studying regional anatomy or systematic anatomy with regional anatomy each region of the body is studied separately and all aspects of that region are studied at the same time. For example, if your syllabus starts with the thorax region, you will study all structures in the thorax, examine them, including the vasculature, the nerves, the bones, muscles, and all structures and organs located in the thorax. And after studying the thorax, for example, 
Other regions of the body can be studied, like the abdomen, pelvis, lower limb, upper limb, back, head. Systematic anatomy course is different. How? Each system is studied and followed throughout the body. For example, study of the cardiovascular system looks at the heart, valves, chambers, and all the blood vessels in the body. When the cardiovascular system is completed, you can study the nervous system, like the brain, spinal cord, and the nerves. It might be examined in detail. And this approach continues for the whole body until every system including nervous, skeletal, muscular, gastrointestinal, respiratory, lymphatic, and reproductive system has been studied. Now, what are the benefits of regional or systematic anatomy? Regional anatomy works best if the anatomy course involves a cadaver dissection, but it fails, but it fails short when understanding the continuity of an entire system throughout the body is needed. Now, systemic anatomy works best if your syllabus requires you to understand the continuity of the entire system throughout the body and fails short if you need to acquire sufficient details and if the syllabus requires you to, to coordinate with a cadaver dissection. What is the anatomical position and why it is important? It is the standard reference position of the body that is used to describe the location of structures. So we use a standard reference position to describe the location of structures in relation to each other. So when the patient is in anatomical position, when he or she is standing, for, standing upright, feet together, hands by side. So upright position, feet together, hands by side, face look neutral, and looking forward, mouth is closed, and the rim of the bone under the eyes is in the same horizontal plane as the top of the opening to the ear. When the inferior rim of the eye cavity is in the same horizontal line as the opening of the ear, palms of the hands face forward, fingers straight, and together with the pad of the thumb, they turned 90 degrees to the pad of fingers toes point forward so upright position feet together hands by side face looking forward focusing on a subject neutral facial expression palms of hands pointing forward toes forward inferior rim of the eye cavity is on the same horizontal line as the opening of the ear. What are the anatomical planes? We have three major groups of planes that pass through the body. Three major planes pass through the body in the anatomical position. We have the coronal planes. The coronal planes. These planes are oriented vertically and divide the body into an anterior or posterior parts. Anterior on the front and posterior in the back. So this is the coronal planes coronal planes anterior parts front parts and back parts the sagittal plane is this plane it's oriented also vertically but at right angles to the coronal plane this is the coronal and this is the sagittal they are at right angle the sagittal planes divide the body into right and left parts this is the sagittal plane this is the median sagittal plane at the midline divides the body into equal right and left parts. The plane that passes at the center of the body dividing into equal right and left halves is termed the median sagittal plane. This is the median sagittal plane, equal halves, right and left. We have the transverse plane, which is also called the horizontal or the axial plane. These planes divide the body into superior, above, and inferior parts superior parts and inferior parts, above and below, above and below. So the coronal planes is this plane vertically dividing the body into anterior and posterior parts. The sagittal planes is this plane also vertically dividing the body into right and left parts. The transverse or horizontal or axial planes divide the body into superior parts and inferior parts. To study anatomy, we have to describe the location, and the location of structures are described 
in reference to the anatomical position in reference to anatomical position we have anterior which is also called ventral describe the position of structures relative to the front of the body we have posterior or dorsal describes the position of structures towards the back of the body also relative to the front which structure is more towards the back we have medial and lateral describe the position of structure relative to the median sagittal planes that divide the body into equal right and left halves we have superior and inferior describe the position relative to the vertical axis of the body we have proximal and distal describe position of structures relative to being closer or farther from a structure's origin we have cranial or caudal towards the head or tail these are also used interchangeably as superior and inferior superior and inferior are also like cranial and caudal we have rostral which is used for structures in the head relative to the nose we have superficial and deep which describe position relative to the surface of the body let's see some examples here is the anterior to the front and posterior to the back for example the nose is an anterior structure whereas the vertebral column is posterior structure nose anterior vertebral column posterior we can also say the nose is a ventral structure whereas the vertebral column is a dorsal structure see another example medial and lateral they describe the position of structure relative to the median sagittal plane divide this body into right and left for example the thumb is lateral to the little finger however the little finger is more medial to the thumb little finger is medial to the thumb more proximal to the median sagittal plane another example the nose is in the median sagittal plane and it is medial to the eyes more towards the median sagittal plane than the eyes and the eyes are medial to the ears the ears are lateral to the eyes and the eyes are medial to the ears let's see superior and inferior for example the head is superior to shoulders superior to the shoulders shoulders are inferior to the head the chest is inferior to the neck neck is superior to the chest we can also say the nose is caudal to the eyes the eyes are cranial to the nose same and the same thing we have proximal and distal proximal and distal how far or close each structures relate to the origin we can say the hand is distal to the elbow joint the hand is distal to the elbow joint which means farther away from the elbow joint we have rostral which is particularly in the head for example we can say the forebrain is rostral to the nose rostral to the nose lastly we have superficial and deep we can say the heart is deep to the sternum lies behind the sternum underneath the sternum we can also say the stomach is deep to the abdominal wall let's make a revision of the anatomical position planes and terms of location and orientation first the anatomical position face looking forward upright position feet together hands by side and face looking forward the inferior margin of the orbit level with the opening of the ear here are the planes we have the coronal plane here is the coronal plane in the blue dividing the body into anterior and posterior parts we have the sagittal plane in yellow dividing the body into right and left parts we have the transverse or horizontal or axial plane dividing the body into superior and inferior parts that's all for this video lesson if you're awesome please subscribe give thumbs up and share with your friends thanks for watching see you in the next video